Hi and welcome to Baker's Cars and Hi-Fi. I see a lot of new subscribers in the channel. Thank you very much for subscribing, it means a lot. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do smash the uh, subscribe button or the like button or both. It's free, doesn't cost you anything. If you're here for the Jag, more stuff's happening, hopefully that uh, way, very shortly. But it's a bit of a miserable day today, so I thought, I've not spoke about Bang & Olsen in a while, so I'll talk a bit about CD players. Bang & Olsen, to my count, released nine different standalone CD players. But they can be roughly categorised into maybe two or three, maybe four different CD players with different model designations between them. So you have stacking systems and you have top loading systems. They're the two main categories. Somewhat disputed in Bang & Olsen circles whether the CD50 or the CDX was the first CD player by Bang & Olsen. Now, the CDX, I believe, was the first one to be put on sale. And the CD50 was the first one to be seen in literature as a prototype. So, depends which way you look at it, really. Um, it's amazing that they built two CD players at the same time that were based on completely different systems internally. The CD50 being a clone of an Iowa uh, DX1200 and the CDX being a rebodied, very pretty rebody, of a CD104 from Philips. Okay, so the CD50 um, released in 1986 and sold until 1987 uh, was meant to go with the BO System 5000. As a standalone player, there is very limited functionality. You can literally load a CD. It takes quite a while, it's pretty clunky. Play it. It does let you read what track you're on. And when it eventually fires into life, it will show you what track you're on along here. and it gives you a readout of whereabouts the track you are. You can advance track one at a time, like so. And you can turn it off. And that's literally all you can do. That's the same really as all the stacking systems. They all only have them basic functions. Now to open it, play it, advance it and turn it off. If you wanted more functionality with your CD50, really, you're best off using it with the BO Master 5000 and one of these behemoths of a remote control. This is how you get the most functionality out of one of these CD players. A very rare option was to have an IR board inside the CD50, but I've never seen one. And I've had 10 of them, and none of them have had the IR board in. Um, and an interesting note on the CD50 was the CD had to be loaded upside down. And that's because they thought that legislation was going to stop upward pointing lasers from being legal. So in this player, this system worked as a downward pointing laser. Upsides of that is the laser never gets dusty. So the laser in these is pretty reliable and uh, Generally, the player is pretty reliable as well, I've found, aside from a belt and the occasional motor issue. But other than that, I've had no problems. Other than them sometimes not starting right at the beginning of the track, um, I think they've got a problem with them reading the table of contents. If the motor starts to get a bit tired, it can't spin the disc up fast enough to read the, the very middle tracks. So here's an example of it working. This is the motor that I'm talking about. There we go. And sometimes you just get a bit gummy and they don't spin up quite fast enough. Yeah, I'm getting that problem with it right now, actually. There we go. And that's the problem I'm having with this CD at the minute, this CD player. I'm just finding this motor sticking. 
So I'm going to have to take it apart and rebuild on the can. So you want to just give it a nudge, it starts to play just fine. The other minor issue you can get is with the drawer not coming in and out properly, and that's to do with a belt that's buried right under there. This one is okay, thankfully, so not too bad. You basically have to remove all of this, all these cogs, and make sure you don't put them back in the wrong order in the wrong place. Replace that belt and then the drawer should come in and out nice and easy. If you do have one with an IR board, that is where you'd find the board location. Right there. In terms of basic specs, the CD50 is a 16-bit player, but it only has one decoder chip. And the way it works is it flicks between the left and right channel really quickly to decode both left and right channels. Bit quirky, bit strange, uh, but it's a great sounding player and it seems to work to good effect. And the Burr's Brown decoders are supposed to be really highly regarded in the audio world. So I can understand why it sounds so good. So if you wanted something that would work with an older Bang & Olsen system, such as what I've got here, something that would uh, never have been intended to work with a CD player, and something just completely standalone, so this will work with any system that you like, any amplifier that you've got, you can plug this in, it just connects with phono cables, easy. None of the fancy DIN business. Um, but there's loads more functionality than you get on a CD50, as you can see. Right on the panel, there's loads of functionality. Uh, sometimes they're not the most reliable player in the world, as just been seen. There we go, now it's working this time. It gave the little question marks, it couldn't read the CD, but now it can, miraculously. It's quite cool how uh, you can see the CD spinning, and you can really notice the difference in speed from track one to track nine. The further into the album you get, obviously, the slower it goes. But yeah, loads of functionality. Not only can you advance it like on a CD50, you can also decide to go to track seven and press play without pressing advance four more times. You can decide to repeat tracks. You can actually set an order on here and play your CD in a different order of tracks. That's not something that I personally do, so generally I'm quite happy with a CD just to stick it on and forget about it and just let it run its course. But if you're somebody who wants to do that, this is loads more functionality. The only downside really is if you've got a lack of space, this is another thing that you can't put anything on top of. It's going to take up more room again. I'm quite fortunate that it happens to fit in this drawer really, so I can... Uh, hide it away when I'm not using it but it's a very pretty player so you want to be able to display it really and oh, there's a moment as well just thinking about reliability on these things there is a couple of minor issues that you can get the boards are double-sided and they have rivets that go through to take the tracks from the top side of the board to the bottom side of the board these rivets are prone to dry joints so there's about 11 on one board and three or four on another board. And the best way to fix them is to actually drill out the solder joint, pass a piece of wire through it, so like some braided wire, and then uh, solder the top and bottom just to make sure there's a really good connection between the two. And that tends to solve the problem for these. I guess the final thing is just to think about how it sounds, and it's a very warm, relaxing player. Now, I don't know if that's because it's 14 bits, so... Generally, everything's ever so slightly more compressed in the dynamic range compared to maybe uh, more modern CD players. Perhaps, I'm guessing. So the CDX got uh, replaced with the CDX2. Externally, very similar, but now utilising 16 bits instead of 14. And it had a different laser, which have some reliability problems. After the CDX2 came the CD3300, which again, I believe is very similar internally to the CDX2. Very last, the top loaders ran from 88 to 94 as part of a BO system. And these were the BO Gram 3500 and 4500, essentially identical inside, just with a different color finish. 
These were just a CD section out of a Bio Center 9000 uh, based on a CDM4, so quite a nice standard player. In around 1987, uh, the stacking system got an update, and with the Bio Master 5500 came the CD 5500. Although externally pretty similar looking to a CD50, internally it was a completely ground up new design uh, with circuit boards for the first time being completely ground up design by Bang & Olsen. Only taking some CD hardware such as the laser assembly from Philips and most of the 5500s and 6500s had the TDA1541A chip in which is a very nice decoder so these players sound very good. Just as a side note, Jacob Jensen really didn't want to design a stacking system. He much preferred uh, long systems that took up a large amount of space in a room. But to be able to compete and be sellable in most houses, a stacking system had to be made. They fortunately do have a really cool draw mechanism though. So you thought the CD50 had limited functionality. Well, the CD6500 has even less functionality. All I can do is load a CD, put it in before it takes your fingers off, and then it will play automatically. Then all I can do from there is skip tracks or turn it off. So it's got two buttons essentially. Extremely simple. When I put a CD on, I really just load it on, put it on and forget about it. I can't really do much else with this CD player anyway, so it's, that's pretty good. In terms of the sound of these, they sound very clear. They are technically, spec-wise, the best of the CD players from Bang & Olsen, uh, the 5500, 6500. They slightly cheapen things for the 7000 internally, but having listened to all of them, they sound identical as far as I can tell. A good player, very reliable. I've never had any issues with mine, and I would recommend one of these if you want a reliable, simple CD player. So that marks the end of separate CD players from Bang & Olsen, only being sold from 1986 to 1994. If you wanted a CD player from Bang & Olsen after 1994, you'd either have to buy old stock or you'd have to buy a system, something like a BO sound. For me, I think it's quite a strange move for a high-end audio manufacturer to stop making separates and really that kind of era when it starts moving away from that is where I kind of start to lose interest in Bang & Olsen just a little bit because I like separates and I think you know a lot of other hi-fi enthusiasts like separates too it allows you to change out your CD player it allows you to change out your amp try different stuff if it's an all-in-one unit you can't do that and uh, a lot of audio enthusiasts like to be able to do that If you're looking for a standalone CD player that will work with any system, Bang & Olsen or not, then a CDX is a good place to look. It has a really nice style, it sounds great. Uh, the only downsides being really that you have to solder the boards, there's no remote control functionality, and uh, you have to have space to put it with nothing on top, you can't stack it. If you're looking for crystal clear sound and ultimate reliability, I would say look at a 5500, 6500 or 7000 series player. They have uh, limited functionality, but if you're the sort of person like me who's quite happy to put a CD on and forget about it rather than fiddle with the tracks, you'll never need the functionality anyway. You'll need to press play. Finally, we have the CD50. Now this is the cheapest out of the players that I've compared and they, to me, sound really nice. They have a good weight in the bottom end, uh, better treble clarity than the CDX. I'm not too bothered about the limited functionality of them because, well, I put a CD on and I kind of just forget about it. It's just on and that's it. So if you're looking for that kind of player, you might like a CD50. If it tells you anything, nine times out of ten, when I put a CD on, it goes in the CD50. Anyway, thank you for listening. Hope that's helpful to anyone who's looking for a Bang & Olsen CD player and not quite sure which one to get.